Hello and welcome to the first episode of this three-part series conducted by ThoughtWorks and Mint. The theme, AI, the next leap in BFSI, captures how the evolving world of AI can shape the future of BFSI. The banking and financial services and insurance, the BFSI sector as we all call it. In India, it has witnessed a transformative digital shift in the past few years, powered by the mobile evolution and change in customer behavior triggered by COVID-19. According to a recent report by BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, AI could reshape 35-50% to 50 of jobs in Indian's banking sector. The report also states that adopting AI is a prerequisite for banks to overcome sticky cost structures and improve productivity. Today, we're going to be talking about the next big leap, the impact of artificial intelligence or AI with a sharp focus on what it means for the BFSI industry. And joining me today is Mr. Bharani Subramaniam. He's the CTO for India and the Middle East at ThoughtWorks. ThoughtWorks is a global technology consultancy that delivers extraordinary impact by blending design, engineering, and of course, AI expertise. With more than two decades of experience, Mr. Bharani has a passion for simplifying complex systems designs and shaping technology strategy for some of the world's most innovative companies. Mr. Barney, great to have you on board with us. Welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So to start with, as we you know discuss, as we introduce, the BFSR sector is undergoing a digital shift and a massive one at that. So from your experience, what are the most significant trends that you're seeing um, for adoption of AI within the BFSI space? Right. So... I mean, I would split it into two parts, actually. So the how we build software in general is changing, and AI has disrupted that significantly. Uh, so BFSI is no exception to that. Um, initially, we have seen banks and other uh, non-banking sector a little bit slow in adoption, but we are now seeing uh, right that is also catching up. So how you build software in, in the banking sector is also changing. Um, second, how you actually embed AI in your banking solutions. Now, that is something banks in India and across the globe has been trying out, you know, since the whole GPT uh, moment has started. Um, we've seen a couple of years where, you know, all, all, pretty much all, every bank had a number of, uh, you know, POCs, but now we are seeing banks actually put uh, these smart applications in production. So, we, we are seeing that disruption right now. Okay. All right, but um, can you also tell us how AI is shaping up the way things are and the way things are likely to go? How can AI make a difference or add value to the sector going forward? Yeah, so that's a good question, right? Like, so if you if you take banking industry or any industry in matter, right? Like, um, how the software behave at runtime is sort of predetermined. So you have a very set user flow, and uh, the flexibility is sort of baked in. So with AI, what is happening is that banks now have a lot more flexibility at runtime, right? Like, so we can truly personalize, and we keep saying hyper-personalization, we can truly personalize offer per individual because now uh, we have the tech to make that happen. So that's fundamental shift. So you can address every individual needs uniquely, and you don't have to bucket them in any uh, any small cluster or anything, right? So that I think is is fundamental, and AI is part of that innovation. You know, many BFSI institutions are still grappling with legacy systems. How do you approach the challenge of integrating cutting edge AI technologies with a client's existing infrastructure in that case? Right. So dealing with legacy has always been a problem, right? Like, uh, I mean, people say it even five years is, is a legacy. If you do not understand what the software is doing and you can't change it at a pace that you want it to change, then we call it legacy. Um, two things that are happening. Um, there are programs and digital transformations which are now being expedited with AI. Um, like I said, you can give the legacy to code to AI and make sense of it and iterate your transformation faster. So that's one area where legacy transformation is kind of amplified with AI and, and mm. AI too. There are other kinds of transformations where you want to infuse uh, AI into the legacy, right? Like, so this is in some sense tricky because you have a legacy systems you hardly understand, but you want to make it even smarter. 
Um, so we have seen techniques where you want to embed agents inside the legacy flow. And, and this is where techniques like, uh, you know, I need to create a safe sandbox within legacy so that, you know, you can, you can let AI applications work under the legacy environment, uh, right? Like, uh, so we've seen, we've seen both. But most importantly, I think with legacy systems, uh, the biggest challenge is how you deal with data uh, and how, how much trustworthy is the data and, and what's the lineage of data, right? Like all these are, are challenges that needs to be addressed, right? Like otherwise you can't transform legacy. Yeah. But organizations are, you know, now transitioning from pilot projects to enterprise wide adoption of AI, the ones who are actually doing it. Mm -hmm. What are the foundational steps that a BFSI company needs to take in order to operationalize AI and also measure its ROI at scale? Yeah, I think let's let's understand the basics first. Like, I think organizations need to upskill uh, like everyone when it comes to AI, right? Like a lot of people uh, are under assumptions that, you know, I'm reading about these things and it is good enough. I think AI literacy, uh, we need to put intentional effort so that, you know, we, we are good at uh, what we claim we are good at, right? Like, so I would put AI literacy as first, uh, if mm. you want to adopt AI, because let's all face it, right? There is a lot and lot of misinformation out there. Uh, people, uh, when you have a new technology, there is the tendency, you know, this is going to solve all my problems. Uh, so in one end, uh, there is sort of overhype of the technology of what it can solve. On the other end, uh, you know, we tend to map how humans solve the problem to how an mm -hmm. AI should solve the problem, right? And I think both are wrong, right? Uh, AI can't solve all problems. At the same time, AI should not be solving problems the same way a human would solve. Uh, so you need to meet in the middle. And I think AI literacy, I would put it as the first step uh, if you want to transform and absorb uh, inside the bank or any org. And I think this, yeah. So I was Go just going to add that, uh, you know, access to tooling would be the next uh, because, you know, it, it, in a way, you know, history is repeating, you know, when computing was first introduced, you know, it was available remotely, right? Like, um, and then we saw the same trend with cloud. Now we are seeing the same trend with AI is that these infrastructures and tools are uh, not at a level where, you know, we can give everything on a laptop, right? Like, so access to tools and infra is probably number two. Okay. And what about the key internal and client facing use cases that you're most excited about right now? And what are the biggest challenges implementing them? I think, right. So when, when it comes to internal and external use cases, um, you know, we had a moment in time where, you know, everything was about, you know, RAG and the retrieval augmented generation. Uh, but in 2025, in late 2025, um, agentic and agentic solutions are taking the center stage right now. So a lot of applications, like internal faces and applications, are getting uh, disrupted by agents. Uh, that's what we see, right? Like, and again, agent and agentic solutions is, is a complete spectrum. Mm. Uh, is there... Uh, you know, in, in someone's definition, an agent should be agentic, meaning uh, you should not tell an agent what to do, right? Um, if your software's internal workflow is, is sort of predetermined, uh, in, in some sense, you just have an AI workflow and you don't have agents, uh, right? So what I'm most interested about is that I think banking sector is actually finally waking up to this fact that mm. not all problems have to be agentic. Some of them are agentic, some of them are not. I think that distinction is slowly seeping into the market. Mm. Um, so that said, many internal facing applications are getting agentic because you want to try out, you know, where it works, where it doesn't, and you need a safe environment to do it. I think internal facing apps are perfect for that. Uh, more of the external facing ones are still, I would say it as a smart workflow where you know, for example, uh, you know, if you have a personal loan journey, you know how the journey looks like, right? Like you don't want that journey to be dictated by a agents. You want the banks to say, you know, there are five steps uh, and in the end of the five steps, you may get it or not. So, so that's the disruption that's happening. That's what I'm excited about is that uh, internal apps, I'm seeing more and more agents. 
How about generative AI? What role do you see generative AI playing in BFSI beyond your basic chatbots and you know so on and so forth? And what are the key risks that you guys are helping clients mitigate? Right. So, so when it comes to generative AI, it's it's a broad umbrella of term, right? Like so, one good use case in BFSI is, uh, you know, like I said, agents are only as good as the data that you give and. Uh, generative AI is very good at synthesizing data, right? Like the difference between the old techniques and the new technique is that it can synthesize production like data. I know this industry's access to data is always been a challenge because you don't want to train models on, uh, you know, directly on production data. But at the same time, you don't want any data, right? Like you want a representative of production so generative AI is very good at synthesizing data that is like production, mm. but you, you sensitize and you keep the PII in mind and uh, don't expose private uh, data to the agent. So, so Gen AI is, is very powerful in that, right? Like synthesize production-like data for uh, training and, and, and inference and trend. Um, right. You know, just circle back to, to, to the introduction that I was giving about ThoughtWorks. You know, you're it's known for its engineering focused approach. How does this unique method methodology help your BFSI clients overcome the challenges and accelerate the AI journey that they're on? Yeah, I think it's no surprise that the way we build software has changed uh, and it's changing all over again. So the way we are helping BFSI clients is that, let's take, for example, legacy modernization, right? Like. Mm. Um, and, and that itself is a spectrum. Let's say you have access to source code and you, you have systems running uh, in, in productions. The way we would approach modernization has changed, right? Like, so it's no longer, I would take two or three years to understand and transform these legacy systems. Um, we have instances where, uh, you know, if you have access to source code and a little bit of access to the domain expert, we can come and understand a system in, in matter of weeks, right? Like, and this was not possible without uh, the, the new age Gen AI tools. So that's mm -hmm. how we see uh, the, the us helping the BFSI. So uh, things that used to be months or years is now weeks or months. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift. Uh, and like I said, there is a lot of uplift in AI literacy and AI tooling, and that's how we're helping the banks. Okay, just before we wrap up, I want you to do some crystal ball gazing and tell us a bit about the future outlook as well. Sure. Looking ahead, what emerging AI technologies, such as agentic AI, the one you were mentioning, will what kind of these technologies will have the biggest impact on the future of financial services as per you? I think we're going to see a lot more adoption of agentic AI. And I also feel... Uh, in, in some sense, we'll hit a glass ceiling of, you know, how effective these agents can be uh, because, you know, out of the box, everyone will have access to the same model. Uh, so how much efficiency you're going to get out of the agents is going to be dictated by, you know, how effectively are you contextualizing these agents for your data, right? So mm -hmm. one prediction, it's, it's not a prediction, we are almost seeing this in reality, is that more and more cutting edge research on fine tuning is going to affect how you use the agents, right? Like, so we are seeing advanced techniques of fine tuning. So you can have your own data and you make the model, even if you make your agents one person effective, at runtime, it makes a huge difference, right? Like I think one clear signal that we are seeing in the next three to six months is that you would not just use out of the box models, you would also take and contextualize it for your own data with techniques like reinforcement fine tuning, right? So that's that's one thing that's going to happen. Great, thank you so much once again for your time, Mr. Barney, and for sharing your valuable insights. It it really helped us gain, uh, you know, uh, an insight and outlook into the future of the BFSI industry here in India, and what we can expect from AI. You you've convincingly highlighted the benefits of adopting and integrating AI in the banking ecosystem. And that too sooner than later. So thank you once again for taking time out and for joining us today. Thank you.